Welcome to day four of the Itty Bitty Mini Art Challenge. Today's mantra is simplify. And am I writing with my left hand? Simplify. Huge art principle. I, I love when I get to see the same principle applied in a lot of the different art forms. So simplify uh, works because if you think about theater, if you're on stage and everybody's talking at once, you're not going to be able to hear anything. So as an artist, our job is to focus our viewers' attention on what they on what we want them to see at different times. So simplification means I might take away some information so that what I want you to look at is going to be stronger. And the way we do that in art is by massing and grouping things together. So that's why today's exercise was so good, especially for painters, because drawing usually looks at lines, but painters look at shapes. So identifying the shapes um, is the skill of a painter. So um, I love this exercise. I hadn't painted like this before. Um, I love the idea. I actually uh, found an exercise where you actually take a picture and you just bring it to five to seven lines. So it's the same thing. You can either do the whole painting or do your whole drawing in five to seven lines or do the five to seven shapes and you outline the shapes. And then once you've got the main shapes, then you can put littler shapes on top of them. And when you think about it this way, painting becomes less a mystery because really face it when i first started to paint i was just i spent so many hours going how did they do that i don't i don't get what they did first and it's because we haven't learned to see we don't learn the principles so it just looks like magic to us it's like I'm, i don't know magic when a magician does does <laughs> when a magician does a magic trick I, I i don't know how they do it and that's part of the fun but for us uh painters once you start learning the principles of art and then you start going into um, uh, art galleries and the day when you actually go, oh, I know how that painter did it. Oh my God, it's so exciting because now we can actually see and we understand the process so we know what they were doing and it's a lot of fun. So I don't wanna to talk too long because it's summertime and it's hot and we should be painting <laughs> or drawing or outside enjoying the weather and maybe walking around taking pictures. So um, this exercise is, is, is perfect for artists of all kinds. Um, I wrote about it in the Facebook group. There's a great saying in, in writing. When you're learning to write, whether it's for novels or screenwriting, there's a phrase that says, kill your babies. Sometimes it gets to the point where you have to kill your babies. And that means in the editing process, when you're editing and you might have a beautiful line that you're so proud of or just a scene in a movie that you love, but it's not working. It's not working because your story is meant to go like this and your little scene made a little curve over here. And you don't want all these little curves. We want it to be simple and clear and understandable and whatever our main idea is, we want to um, put that, uh, you know, uh, color that, color that by um, making it uh, really stand out. So simplify. We don't have to draw every blade of grass. We can group it together. And one way to group things together is to look at what side is in the light and what side is in the shade. So you look at those two colors and then you can group a tree. Here's a good piece of paper. Do I have any? So, you know, you might have a tree, like we learned to draw in grade three. <laughs> Great, I can't remember. And this side's in the shadows, because the sun is here and it's going that way. So we can start looking at what's in the sun and what's in the light. And instead of painting a million leaves, we can just mask them. It's up to you how you want to mask them. That's your thing. You go find the best way for you. But um, it's a really cool trick, and um, and uh, 
I just popped into my head something else that I wanted to say. And this is what, you know, fire art history is all about. Fire art history goes up and down and up and down. And one of the ways that it goes up, I don't, I don't know if it's up or down. It doesn't matter. It's just waves. Human beings seem to be waves. And fine art history is waves. Um, you know, once you get to one, you know, you get a movement and then you go to the extreme. There's no place to go. So you start swinging back down. And then you go to the other extreme. So realism uh, is, a, is a, kind of like an ideal. And you can go to hyper-realism. And because we're humans, we get... Um, bored we like novelty so we'll be painting realism 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 and then you know we get bored like this is what happened with the impressionists um they're painting realism for so long that um you know our uh, you know artists like to try new things and they had a few different inventions art and science inventions go together and the light spectrum and the invention of paint tubes so this happens around 1840 and before paint was, uh, uh, before paint tubes were invented, paint was usually mixed by the artists themselves. And if they had leftover, kept in bladders. And bladders were pretty leaky. So these guys allowed for, uh, painters to paint outside. So now you have the um, impressionists painting outside. They're delighted by the light. And they decide that, and they learn that you don't have to mix the palette colors. The colors on your palette you can put blue and yellow together side by side and your eye will mix them so um once we go to realism then we start to take things apart and you'll see that in our how much can i take things apart and have them still what happened there how much can i take it apart and have it still hold shape and then you can get down to like simpler 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 and then it starts to go right to abstract Somewhere in there are shapes and designs and patterns. So it's lots of fun. There's no right or wrong way. It's just lovely to know our history and the history of the way that people have learned to see things and the and the way they've learned to see things and the way to communicate. So, um, yeah, I, I really like the simplification of it personally because I'm uh, painting every leaf and the way the traditional painters paint takes way too long. <laughs> so I'd rather get in there, swoosh, 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 finish a painting in the alla prima style, which means to do it all in one sitting. It's an Italian word, alla prima, all at once. So this is another thing that uh, the impressionists figured out what to do. Once they got their paint tubes nice and small that they could carry outside, you wanted, the, the sun was changing, so they went fast and drew fast and tried to get it done all in, in one sitting. And that revolutionized painting also. Because before that, the classical style, traditional style, you painted very thin layers, had to wait for it to dry, painted another layer, had to wait for, a drop, for it to dry. Very different style. So um, I love them both. I love the Flemish painters, but I love, you know, Alec Lima and um, painting wet and wet. And tomorrow I'm going to launch my course, my itty bitty mini intro to oil painting, where I teach you everything you need to know about oil painting in really simple steps and uh, using many steps in the a la prima so that you can paint many paintings in an hour or two. Because I, I think it's the best way to um, learn to paint because a little guy like this will take usually under an hour and a half. And the more paintings you finish, the better you're going to get. And every time you start a new painting, you can try a new technique. You can try a new brush. You can try a new brand of paint. You can try a new medium. You can try um, a new subject. Um, it just goes on and on. And you don't know until you try. So that's uh, one of my favorite. Uh, that's another favorite phrase that we had from clown school. It was uh, benevolent cynicism. Or it could be cynical benevolence. <laughs> I can't remember. It was a long time ago, but I think they work. So it basically means you can you can be you know you can be questioning or distrustful, but try it first because then you know what you were rejecting. If you're not even going to try it, then you don't know. Now you have to go by what other people tell you. But if you do it yourself, then you will know. And then, you know, this is a rule that I have from food. <laughs> Whenever you're trying a new food, try at least three times. Like cilantro, 
I remember the first time I tried cilantro, I was like, what a odd taste. And I'm eating it and going, I don't know if I like this or not. And then the second time I had it, I'm like, well, there's that odd taste again. Oh, the, you know, look how they're using it here. And the third time I tried, there's that odd taste that I love. So I'm a cilantro lover, and I know that some people, for some people, it tastes like soap. I know what that's like because I think licorice is not a tasty flavor. So um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a watercolor painter, but just to show you how um, today's exercise simplify to divide your your thing into five to seven shapes. Like I, I use that for this watercolor that I'm going to show you tomorrow. It's in tomorrow's... Uh, it's in tomorrow's um, lesson, three little paintings, how to use all the drawings that we've done so far. Um, remember, we went big, go big or go home. So that's all about learning to be confident and to take risks and to step into your power and really enjoy it. The second one was to draw what we see, not what we know, and that means really take a look of what you're painting. Look especially at the angles of things. Compare the sizes. So really see. The third was more, more, more. If you got something, if you, if you, um, you know, whatever is exciting to you in your painting, can you make it even bigger? Can you stretch yourself beyond your limitations as an artist? You know, don't play small, stretch yourself. Look at an elastic band. How far can you go? And you can go in either way. You can go big. And powerful but if you're doing a small quiet scene how small and quiet can you go so that we have a range so we want to practice our range especially with our drawing here's the fun part and today's was simplify so this is a, also a way to start looking and going what is the main thing i want to say i want to say just one thing because when i say one thing it's easier for people to remember Right. If I just said a billion things, you're not going to remember them all. But if I said one thing like today, simplify, 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 you will remember it. We have to repeat things to remember it. So um, you can almost see the pencil marks here, how I've got five main shapes and then um, the five little smaller ones. And I just this has got me totally interested in watercolor painting now. So now I have to go and buy watercolor tools. 